Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, affirmative on that, and yes, we must have a purpose in life. Uh, This is Greg Anthony on the Investigative Journal here on January 6, 2017, and our purpose, yes, here on this show is to expose this hidden agenda. It's not fake news. It is not uh, conspiracy theories. Uh, This is stuff we lay out, facts. We lay out facts that just get overlooked by the mainstream media and all these great historians. It's incredible. And uh, I wanted to start out today. We have a purpose here. Yes, that's the purpose. And I wanted to start out today. I usually give you a Jesuit quote of the day or a Vatican quote. But today I want to give you some cryptic quotes uh, that refer to them. And they're quite interesting. And I, I... was made aware of some of these. When I used to do uh, uh, my show years ago, I interviewed Tupper Saucy, uh, who was the author of Rulers of Evil, and we discussed a number of things off the air. And one of the things we talked about was this hidden hand behind our con- uh, behind the formation of our country. And he has laid some uh, interesting facts out there that make one understand that there were some Jesuit and, and uh, Vatican involvement in the formation of this country. In fact, uh, much of uh, the strategy of the Revolutionary War could have and and probably was created by one of the Jesuit generals back then, Lorenzo Ricci. Incredible story. But uh, to talk about some, you know, just some cryptic quotes, giving you an idea what I'm talking about um, and what I talked to Tupper about a couple times. 33rd degree Masonic scholar Manley P. Hall. Now you should look him up and read some of his things. You get a lot of information from these guys. They tell you what they're doing. You just have to have enough uh, gumption, so to speak, enough uh, fortitude, enough uh, you know inspiration to look behind the scenes a little bit, to start reading. Don't just read from Jesuitism and all this uh, Jesuit history that they give us, this this history that's been whitewashed by them. But Manley P. Hall, uh, in his book, Secret Teachings of All Ages, an encyclopedic outline of the Masonic, uh, Hermetic, uh, Kabbalistic, and Rosicrucian symbology philosophy, This was written in 1988. Now, that's quite a title. Remark this. He said, quote, Not only were many founders of the United States government Masons, but they received aid from a secret and august body existing in Europe, which helped them to establish this country for a peculiar and uh, particular purpose known only to the initiated few. Now, that's interesting. And, you know, much of these these historians that we have, they gloss over this Masonic presence, the presence of this august body, uh, this august holy body. And you have to kind of uh, look deep to find any kind of record of this. Well, there was a guy who was the, his name was Charles Thompson. He was a classical scholar, a discreet Protestant, and He was known as the Perpetual Secretary of the Continental Congress. He was the guy that inscribed all the minutes of every session. He was the insider that knew all the stories, all the background, all the things that uh, will kind of consider him. It's kind of like what uh, Julian Assange brought out, you know, through WikiLeaks. Get all the background stuff that they keep secret. And wouldn't it be nice to bug the Vatican and, and the White House, you know, we, de- we deserve it. They bug us. You know how many times they bug us? <laughs> the NSA can look into anything we do. Well, we should be able to look at what they do. So I've always in- encouraged that. And uh, But don't get caught. And uh, don't tell them where you heard it. <laughs> I'm just joking. But anyway, so he was this guy that inscribed all the men. He knew everything, so to speak. And Charles Thompson... Uh, Basically, after everything, after all the meetings were done, he retired to his home 
and he was constantly asked, can you give us the inside story? Charles, you know everything. Can you give us the the inside story of really what happened in the, the insider's history of the Revolutionary War? Can you do it for us? And he always refused because he had copious notes. And he had even, uh, all this was kept in, uh, all this, all the records of really what was all this hidden agenda. Maybe Lorenzo Ricci was involved in all of this stuff. And they wanted to the, tell the truth about Benjamin Franklin and really why this country was formed to get the Vatican in here to one day take over and take away all our rights. They had to create a country that seemed to be the perfect place, the United States Constitution. But with this, it allowed the Vatican to enter because they were persona non grata back then. Nobody wanted them around. The, the, the original people in this country realized the Jesuits, who they were, and they wanted no part of them because they saw what they were doing in Europe and how they almost blew up parliament. I mean, they want they want to control governments. They want to take over. So they had to figure out a strategy to get in here, and that is open up the door to everything, freedom of religion, freedom of speech. And from one small diocese in Maryland, it grew to the, gr the biggest organization in this country with tentacles all over the place, from politics to finance to all this tax-free relig religious, um, uh, these churches and all this land they get for nothing. So they've pretty much accomplished their goal. And now they're on this trek to create a one world order, one world religion, which they're working on as we speak. So going back to Thompson, uh, finally he put this, put this out in the public. Now all of his records, uh, Nobody knows. I think only the elite few know where they are. They could be hidden in some Sonic Lodge. They could be in the Vatican Library, you know, the Vatican Archives, which are off limits to, you know, people that really want to know the truth. Yeah. So here's the deal. So here's what Thompson said. In reply to that, can you give me the insider's story about really what went on in the Revolutionary War and why this country was created? He categorically said no. I ought not, for I should contradict all the histories of the great events of the revolution, and should by my account of men, motives, and measures that we are wholly indebted to the agency of providence. Now, folks, listen to those words, agency of providence, for its successful issue. Let the world admire the supposed wisdom and valor of our great men. Perhaps they may adopt the qualities that have been ascribed to them. <laughs> Maybe somebody will have finally... Do you get that? That's good. And thus good may be done. I shall not undeceive future generations. Now, to understand that phrase, you got to understand the agency of providence, what that meant back then. And notice, and I'm going to quote from Saucy here. He says, notice that Thompson does not use the word providence alone which was understood in his day to mean God or Christ. He did not say we are wholly indebted to God or we are wholly indebted to Christ, but rather to the agency thereof. If Thompson knew the word agency was a synonym for vicar, which I think he did, that a professional linguist, you know, he's a professional linguist, and he knew that the popes had been called vicars of Christ, since the 5th century, and I can't imagine that a biblical scholar of his quality wouldn't then t he know what was the most likely meaning of those words. We are wholly indebted to the vicar of Christ, and that is the Roman papacy. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so you, you think about that over the weekend, and let's get on with the show. Okay. I played yesterday the possibility, and it was a it was talking about the end times prophecies and the Jesuit uh, influence as astronomers, as well as uh, their influence in creating the heliocentric theory opposed to the geocentric theory, which says the Earth is flat, stationary, and enclosed. Now. At the end of, I only got to, I, there was about ten, 10 minutes left of that presentation. And the question they were asking was, do the Jesuits promote a fake alien invasion during the end times? 
So there was about 10 minutes of that. And what I thought I would do is play a portion of it just to kind of tie up the loose ends and then get on with the show uh, with the main topics of discussion today, which I think you'll find quite interesting. I just want to tease you with a little little bit, but uh, Donald Trump recently said that all pedophiles should get the death penalty. So we're going to start with that and show you how perverted the Vatican really is and all of our leaders and show you. My, my point is that Obama, if you look at his uh, record, it's going to be next to nothing in a while because he did everything by executive order. But what he's going to be known for is, uh, what, transgender bathrooms, promoting the LGBT communities, all of that? Well, maybe so. But my question is, if they really promote this, why then don't they come out of the closet? Okay, here we go. The Jesuits and this idea that there will be a fake alien invasion at the end times. We know the alien invasion is the manufactured problem. Naturally, a representative of mankind will be chosen to negotiate a peace treaty with these invaders. The solution will be predetermined and under the direct control of Satan himself. Francis, the eighth and final pope, steps forward to negotiate this faux peace. A Jesuit, he has come under the direct control of demons by way of the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola. Francis has previously ensured he has sympathetic ties with all religions. Thus, will be the logical choice as mankind's representative to establish a peace treaty with these invaders from outer space. This treaty will, one, end the war exactly 150 days after it starts. Two, place the Pope at the head of the New World Order as mankind's representative. Three, place the Pope as mankind's savior at the head of a new unified one world order and religion. As savior of the world, the Pope will then be in a perfect position to establish one common worship day for all. Sunday, calculated by the Papal Gregorian calendar. This unification under one government and one religion will appear logical to those more desirous to have a traitorous peace in a sinful world than to live as is their creator's way, which brings in eternal life. These want only an easy way out and will join and enforce Satan's new one world theocracy. All heads of state will hand their sovereignty over to the Pope as scripture explicitly spells out. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. This is the event that begins the final struggle between the forces of good and evil. Under threat of continued extraterrestrial aggression, the peoples of Earth will come together to wage relentless war on all those who stand for Bible truth. The conscientious few who place the word of Yah above all earthly mandates will be seen as renegades. Individual religious liberty will be sacrificed for a promised yet finite safety. It is better for a few to perish, it will be argued, rather than the entire world is plunged into suffering under continued alien aggression. When the fifth seal was opened, John saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yahuwah and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, 
How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? The answer given is portentous and foreshadows the intense persecution that shall come upon the righteous under the first woe. During that time, many will be martyred for their faith as they refuse to unite with the wicked world to worship on a day that pays homage to Satan, the great deceiver. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. For 500 years, this Jesuit conspiracy has taught the story of a globe Earth, circumnavigating the sun, itself spinning around the center of an immense galaxy, which likewise speeds with over billions of galaxies throughout limitless space. Within this immense realm, surely there are other varieties of intelligent life which inhabit other worlds, these lies climax with the alien invasion prophesied in Revelation 9. The ultimate act will occur when Francis, as Satan's representative, assumes leadership of the world while negotiating a peace treaty on behalf of the human race with the fallen angels. Then Satan will have achieved his long desired goal to rule the earth. The first wall reveals the opening sequence of events in Satan's end game to deceive the world. For centuries, the Jesuits have worked to convince the human race the world is round. This Jesuit Pope unites mankind in infamy, all under one government and one religion, none of whom will ever know the beauty of eternal life. And this so very close to the second coming of Yahushua, the world's Messiah. Pope Francis then stands before those left upon the earth as their prime benefactor. The truth is, an extraterrestrial invasion is not possible within an enclosed earth. None would fall for this delusion with scripturally clear and a spiritually correct understanding of the layout of our earth and Yahuwah's universe. People who know the truth would quickly realize any extraterrestrials appearing in our closed system must then be demons. And any attempt to place the Pope at the head of a unified one world religion would notoriously fail. The Pope would never be accepted as the savior of the human race in a brokered peace treaty with demons. The masses would see Francis colluding with fallen angels and turn from him with abhorrence. And yet, the first woe is just the beginning, just the opening salvo in this climax of the ages. It lays the foundation for an even greater fraud that will follow quickly thereafter. Be sure to watch the next video in this series. Okay, and he goes on to say that is the next video he wants to present. It's called uh, The Dem Demonic Masterminding, something like that. The Fake Second Coming of Christ. So they're going to fake that as well. So go find that. Go find that. Quite interesting. Now, I, I can't predict the future. And under this scenario, it's got to happen pretty quick because if Francis is the eighth king, and that's what's said in the Bible, then he's, he's, he's got getting up there in years. And I remember him making a speech a couple, three, maybe two years ago, saying his, his papacy will only last a few years. So, uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. This is one end time scenario they're presenting. If you agree or disagree, get a hold of me at gregbeacon at gmail.com and I can get your words. You know, people text me, they email, we put those emails and texts in the show. And uh, I think that would be quite interesting because uh, maybe other people have different ideas about this other Bible scholars who have interpreted the end times 
So let me know what you think about this. And uh, really, it's our goal here just to present different ideas uh, because none of us can really, as human beings, predict the future. We have to, use, I, I believe, using the Bible as a guide is fantastic. And uh, it's amazing how I even believe these, you know, the Jesuits and the Vatican, they also use it. Uh, they copy it and then they reverse it and they do everything completely opposite. And uh, that's what you have to get uh, to understand, I think. And uh, like I said, I'm going to, in the second half, I got only, what, uh, four minutes here, so I don't want to get started on uh, the main portion of this program, which is going to uh, really. I got a number of little little segments and clips here that's really going to uh, bring things to a point of view here that I really think is important. Uh, that we're we're being deceived so badly. I mean, all you see. I mean, I can think of all of these problems, and we see all of this child abuse in the uh, Catholic Church. We see the Christian persecutions around the world. Uh, next week, I want to get back to uh, the Tony Alamo story. And let me just say this. He's been put in prison for 175 years, as I've mentioned many times, for crimes he didn't commit at all. This ministry, a Christian ministry, has Christian ministry, Greg, speak up, has uh, been attacked. I've covered this story for decades, and we're trying to get the Trump administration to look at this through his pardon attorney to get Tony released. He's been in jail for eight years. And there's so many of these crazy pardons going on now. I mean, Obama should be considered a traitor and tried for treason. He's letting out. You, you, you know of Guantanamo Bay and all of these people in there that are, uh, you know, terrorists for ISIS, Al-Qaeda. He's letting... Uh, most of them out, and many of them will go return to the battlefield. And, I mean, the guy's just working for the other side. Now, today, uh, a New York governor, Mario Cuomo, has just released someone who was convicted of a triple murder during the Vietnam War era. They, she was involved in the revolution, some revolutionary group, and they hijacked, if you remember, a Brinks truck in downtown New York for a one point some million dollars. Two police officers and another person were killed. She was one of the team uh, involved in this. It was a very uh, calculated, almost execution as well, and, and, and theft. And Cuomo's letting her out after 35 years, and her original sentence was 75 years to life. So she got, she kills two police officers, and she gets 75 years, and now she's going to be let out. And we have a Christian minister who didn't commit anything, and that can be proven. And he's in for 175 years. It's insane. And if you don't uh, rally behind, or at least look into this story, you'll see what I'm getting at here of what they're really doing. And the Zen Time story I told you, or I, I played for you here, is just another... Uh, something else to think about because we're all wondering where is this leading to? Where is it all going to? So I hope uh, at least presenting that will and if you agree or disagree let me know and uh, first of all don't take everything I say here as gospel truth I, will just, I do this show for a reason and that is for you to open your mind to start researching yourself more and more and to lay out any criticism that you may have of me I'm not afraid of that. And also, uh, please, if you do agree, let me know too. It's also nice to hear <laughs> from, you know, I get a lot of flack emails, as you can tell, because the Jesuits really don't like me, but they put up with me. I think they need to have some kind of enemy. They, they can't get rid of everybody yet. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to come back and ask that major question. If Obama is presenting, you know, his biggest uh, achievement that has been transgender bathrooms, why doesn't, why don't all these people and him come out of the closet if they support this stuff? Doesn't make sense. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal.
The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off limits by the Supreme, by the Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command. command. But stand tall, people. people. Listen, Listen up, 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 and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, we're back on the investigative journal. Let's start out with this. Trump recently said uh, pedophiles should get the death penalty. Okay, now this came on the heels of that Pizzagate story that was released, uh, that came through the John Podesta emails released by WikiLeaks and uh, showed you about this pizza ring, this pizza place in New York, or excuse me, in Washington, D.C., that allegedly was a haven for pedophiles high up in the government of the United States. Now, the question I ask is, how come there's so much perversion in the Vatican and in the high levels of the United States government. And I'm not referring to Pizzagate. I'm referring to stories we've done for eight to 10 years on this and these pedophile rings all over the country, uh, i.e. many of my uh, interviews with New York police detective Jim Rothstein verifying all this. Now, let's get back to Pizzagate real quick. Uh, I believe that they wanted this information out there and it was a red herring 
And the reason they did is after everybody, all these people started presenting Internet stories, they quickly came out and said, all this is fake news. The Pope, Hillary Clinton, and others came out and said that fake news should be stopped. We must control the Internet. These stories shouldn't be put out there. They're all fakes. But they never denied them. They never denied them. Podesta never denied them. They never got into the particulars. It just came out as fake news, and the media does not talk about it. Any one of these stories, when they start talking about Julian Assange and all the things he brought out now, it's a big deal on Capitol Hill. Russian cyberspace. Uh, Julian Assange was given this by the Russians. He had, says he wasn't. Not one story talks about the leaks regarding Podesta and the Pizzagate. They just forget about it and call everybody on the Internet phonies and they want to stop the internet from this and the pope comes out and says well uh anybody who covers stories like this is a uh, he uses some big huge word which means uh, you 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 are you eat feces and you are addicted to feces actually said that so what he's doing they're using this story to close down the internet and pope even said we shouldn't talk about scandals we should only talk about the good things what they're trying to say really is that we're going to clamp down on you guys if you don't listen to us now that we'll find a way to do it so my uh impression of this is going to we're going to go a little bit deeper today and now trump says pedophiles should get the death penalty right okay now if he says that I must, he must mean that Cardinal Spellman, remember the Cardinal Spellman years ago, was nailed as a pedophile by Jim Rothstein, New York police detective? I guess he should have got the death penalty. Recently, uh, Pope Francis came out and said, one in 50 Catholic priests are pedophiles. So Trump must believe that uh, all of these priests should get the death penalty. But then why do they allow and fund the Catholic Church in this country? Why don't they close down their schools, their churches, like they closed down the Alamo ministry when they accused Tony of child abuse, when, he, when there was no evidence of it? They accuse people like Tony Alamo and others who are revealing the truth about what's really going on at the higher levels of our government and in, in the Vatican. They accuse them, they get them out of the way, put them in jail, kill them, whatever, and if Trump is serious about what he said, he shouldn't protect these bishops. And it even goes farther than that. And I'm not going to play the clip because i got a number of clips to play. But recently, the Pope came out and said he's not going to hold accountable these bishops who uh, are allowing these priests to exist. They were going to have a big meeting in the Vatican and cut down on it. But actually, Ratzinger was the first to, you know, Benedict, he put out a letter to all of the bishops of the world that you are not to cooperate with the police. We'll take care of it internally. Now, Francis is admitting certain things, but he's not getting to the problem and basically has said even this, okay, we're going to have this meeting where bishops must be held accountable. Then he canceled it and they're not being held accountable. It's all double talk. And so if Trump is serious, why not one word about the Vatican ever? If the media is serious about stopping perversion, pedophilia, getting rid of all this stuff, cleaning up the countries, draining the swamp in Washington, then why don't they bring in the whole story? Because this is a cover-up. And in the pedophilia world, what they usually will do is, like Jim Rothstein said, what they will do, what they will do, is they'll always, you know, throw a bone to the American people. They'll they'll get a low-level pedophile and they'll say, here, see, we've stopped the problem. But at the higher levels, the investigations invariably stop. And you can go back to some of my old interviews with Jim Rothstein to show you that. Okay, let's move on. I have a few questions to ask. Now, and I want to ask... Uh, you know, this you can be directed right to Obama and all these people in higher levels of the Vatican and government. They'll never answer. But I want to uh, present this. I, uh, if Obama's going to be remembered 
probably for his uh, transgender bathrooms and his support of the LGBT communities and this whole idea, uh, you know, what he's presenting. Why doesn't he come out of the closet? And why doesn't Michelle come out of the closet or Michael? Why doesn't Obama admit he's gay? Why doesn't Michelle admit she's a transgender or Michael? Why doesn't Hillary Clinton admit she's a lesbian? Why doesn't Pope Ratzinger admit, you know, Pope uh, Benedict admit he has a boyfriend and he's gay if they really support this movement? The reason they don't is, one, they really are hypocrites. All they want to do is create perversion, but then they hide from it. And my point is, they also would never get elected. And the Pope had to resign. Pope Ratzinger resigned for this reason. Remember the story in the La Repubblica? That's a newspaper in Italy. This is what I'm saying. This, when, remember what I used to talk about when I lived there? None of the stories about the Vatican Bank scandals ever came here, but they were reported in the news in uh, Italy and in France. Well, the same thing happened recently. La Repubblica, a paper in Italy, reported on this gay movement in the Vatican and that they had information that Ratzinger was involved in it, had a boyfriend, so he had to go. Now, it was just, there was too much information coming out and eventually it would seep here, especially with social media. So he's now, and I have inside sources in, in Rome, he's now living in the Vatican still with his gay lover. Okay. Now, people will dispute that. They'll say, Greg, you're crazy. No way. Go ahead. Throw it all at me. I don't care. But let's start out with Obama and Michelle. Now, Joan Rivers, if you remember her, some of you youngsters don't. She's a comedian. She's, she was in her 80s. And she made a statement regarding Michelle being a tranny and that Obama's gay. Now, about 30, I think it was 30 to 33 days later, that's the Illuminati number, she was killed. Well, they said there was some uh, malpractice or there was some problem when she went in for a, a normal, a routine procedure to with her doctor. But I lay odds that she was killed for making this statement. Here's what she said, so I want you to listen to it. And it's a very short clip, about 39 seconds. Joan Rivers said this, and she was serious. It's on the news. We're officiating the wedding in New York yesterday. Is this like a is this like a new uh, cottage uh, career move I for you? I'm so excited. Good. And I should do very well because I don't choke. And do you think that the country will see the first the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman well, we president? We already have it with Obama. So let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle is a trans. Uh, I'm sorry. She's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's okay. Her last statement was, it's okay. It went viral, about almost 2 million hits, and uh, she had to go, correct? Okay, on this issue, you can go to the web and find, man, a number, a number of videos, and it gets into this transgender issue, and is Michelle a transgender? And you can find, they do studies on her body type, uh, many different things regarding this issue. I'm only going to play one, so you do that on your own. I want to play one clip. And Barack Obama is giving a speech to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And he makes the mistake, or maybe he did it purposely, because, you know, they do have to tell us. But he refers to Michelle as Michael. This, to me, uh, is enough to play for you here today. And you can find all the other videos regarding her body type regarding some uh, poses she makes that makes you understand uh, it shows her her man parts and after this one I got to talk about their children who I believe are being rented because there are no records of their births here we go with Obama talking to the Joint Chiefs of Staff and there's almost like 
on this video too. Two million hits. My question is, if they really support this gay movement, they've made it so political, why don't they come out of the uh, closet if they really believe it? Now, some people say he's going to once uh, he's, he's out of office. And that'll be interesting. But uh, here we go. Barack Obama calling and really telling you he's married to Michael. The women of the finest military in the world. Most of all, Admiral Mullen, Deborah, Michael and I, Michael and I, Michael and I. What's the matter with you, nigga? <laughs> President, does anything scare him? You know, uh, well, when my, my, uh, my when uh, Michelle's man, when my, my, uh, my when uh, Michelle's man, when my, my, uh, when my, my, uh, my, when, uh, Michelle's man. Okay, that uh, little clip went on a little bit, showing she had man hands, and uh, the guy that did it uh, presented a few things, some comments afterwards, using uh, the N-word, and at this particular juncture, uh, you know, I don't support that, I don't use that word, but anyway, it slipped into the video, but what I'm getting at is, how could he make that mistake? Does he want you to know that? Or was it just a, 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 a mistake? Interesting. Okay, there's also a number of uh, clips out there, a number of videos out there, and uh, regarding uh, the children of the Obamas and that they uh, basically are not possibly their children because Michelle is Michael and he's a man. Now, it's very interesting. You don't find any pictures of her ever being pregnant when Obama was a senator. You find no pictures of their uh, children with them when they were very young. And also, there are no hospital records, supposedly, that people have searched into this. They can find no records of these two kids. Now, one guy came out with a clip, and he likes to put down Barry Sotero as who he is. And uh, that's who he claims Obama really is. But uh, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is there's a lot of facts here. These, this is a very, why are, are these people hiding this if they really support the gay movement? And uh, all you gay people out there. And another thing about this gay movement. Now, as soon as it became political, man, did I see an increase in gay people. When I grew up, there weren't that many. Now, just answer that question. Do people get on board, you know, just to get the perks? Uh, I don't know. But anyway, let's listen to, now, are the Obama girls' real parents found by this man? Were they adopted or just borrowed? Interesting. Rent-a-kid. Here we go. Here we go. Are these the real parents of Obama's daughters? Are these the parents of Obama's daughters, Malia and Sasha Obama? Take a look at this. This is Anita Blanchard and her husband, Martin Nesbitt. According to the New York Times, they are close family friends of the Obamas through Michelle Obama's brother, Green Arrow, Craig Robinson. There they are at the bottom, Anita Blanchard and Marty Nesbitt. Marty Nesbitt is head of the Obama Foundation. He's the chairman. Here's Martin Nesbitt speaking with Rahm Emanuel. Here's Martin Nesbitt with Valerie Jarrett and Obama. Here's Martin Nesbitt on Air Force One with Michelle Obama. Where are they headed? Well, maybe to Hawaii. There's Obama and Anita Blanchard, the wife, in Hawaii. On a family vacation, yellow shirt, that's Martin Nesbitt, polka dot dress, that's his wife, Anita Blanchard. They travel with the Obamas to Hawaii. They are old friends of the family. What else do we notice about Martin Nesbitt? Well, he looks exactly like Malia Obama. They look very similar. They look very similar. Could this be Malia Obama's father? 
could his wife, his wife, the resemblance is even closer to Sasha. Anita Blanchard looks like Sasha Obama. Looks like the other Obama daughter. Now, when bloggers went digging for baby photos of the Obama daughters, they had trouble finding anything. They found a couple things, but when we zoom in on this photo, what do we find? Blue areas are sloppy Photoshop work. I mean, it looks like it was like a cut and paste job. It's really sloppy. Now, then they tried to find birth records of the Obama daughters. They went looking for the birth doctor who delivered them. Guess who delivered the Obama daughters? That's right, Dr. Anita Blanchard, the wife of Marty Nesbitt, delivered the Obama daughters. Hat tip, fellowship of the minds. Both daughters were, both Obama daughters, delivered by their parents' friend, Dr. Anita Blanchard, at University of Chicago Medical Center. So this woman on the left, the family friend, who looks like the daughter, delivered the daughters, delivered both of them. Here's Obama and Marty Nesbitt. How do they know each other? Going all the way back, well, could they be connected through the gay bathhouse in Chicago, man's country? A lot. Obama has a lot of shady connections through there. So the question is, could the Nesbitt be lending their daughters out to the Obamas for photo ops, and they pretend to be the Obama daughters? Why? Because the Obama daughters, two men can't have a baby. Here's some supporting evidence. Ready? Two men cannot produce a baby. Look at Michelle Obama. She looks like she can bench press Obama with one hand. All right, these are two men. Ask Joan Rivers. Michelle Obama is a tranny. These are two men. They can't have daughters of their own. Watch this. Obama refers to Michelle as Michael. Distinguished guests and men and women of the finest military in the world. Most of all, Admiral Mueller, Deborah. Michael and I also want to acknowledge uh, your son Jack who's deployed today all of you have performed extraordinary service to our country here's more evidence Michelle Obama has no clue what year she got married to Obama Mich watch Michelle Obama fumble she doesn't know what decade she got married ready what's your what's your question how long have you been with Barack Obama have I we been married uh, 20 something years. Wait, somebody, you guys know the date. When was it? It's been, it's been over a decade. It's been a while. You just watched Michelle Obama narrow down her own wedding year to a 20 year window. She's pretty sure she got married sometime during that 20 year window. Plus, Obama's Hawaii birth certificate is totally forged, as we prove right here. Subscribe and share. Okay, enough on the Obamas. You can look all that stuff up. Let's move to Hillary Clinton. Now, many people have said she's a lesbian. Now, if she supports women, the gay rights movement, wouldn't it be, uh, you know, can't we get some honesty from her? Well, we know we can't. Uh, she's a pathological liar, as her campaign showed. But it's interesting. You can go and find a lot of uh, information on her affairs, and her relationship with Uma Abedin, one of her special assistants, her homosexual relationship with her. But one I found interesting was Yoko Ono. Now listen to this. In the 70s, she admitted to having an affair with Hillary Clinton. Let's listen to this. Well, I know this is an older report uh, from May of this year, but... Uh, this is just uh, to show you that uh, Hillary Clinton is not a heterosexual. She's a sodomite. Yoko Ono, the one who was married to uh, John Lennon, who was shot many years ago, says, I had an affair with Hillary Clinton in the 1970s. Well, from Los Angeles, Yoko Ono shocked reporters yesterday when she responded to a question concerning the presidential run of Hillary Clinton and the possibility that she could could become the first woman president of the United States in American history. The artist and widow of John Lennon, who is in Los Angeles, to present a collection of club cups and saucers she is exhibiting at the Museum of Modern Art, totally took reporters by surprise by admitting she had not only met the former first lady at various times during a series of protests against the Vietnam War in New York in the 1970s, but also knew her intimately. 
The celebrity admitted laughingly to having a fling with her at the time and acknowledged her election would be a great advancement for the LGBT and women's rights in America, she added. See, just like Obama. <laughs> Hillary Clinton has been hit by a series of allegations of being a lesbian in her career, which could ruin her bid for the presidency, believe some experts. And that would make perfect sense why she didn't care about Bill Clinton and all the women that he had sex with. Why? Because their whole marriage was just a facade. Yoko Ono, when asked about her thoughts about Hillary's run for the presidency, completely took reporters by surprise. We've met many times during the New York-Vietnam War protests in the 1970s and became very intimate. We shared many of the same values about sexual equality, fighting against the authoritarian, patriarchal, male-dominated society we were raised in, she explained. We had a brief romantic fling when I lived with John in Manhattan and Hillary was studying at Yale, but eventually we lost touch. I'm amazed how things are going well for her and wish her the best for her campaign, she told reporters during the press conference. Experts believe that the statement could affect the presidential candidate's bid for the presidency, but previous allegations of Hillary Clinton's lesbian past have not seemed to play against the front-runner for the 2016 Democratic presidential race yet. And why? Well, because there are so many sodomites in the country. That's one reason. And there's uh, many churches that are uh, being led by sodomites, preaching on the pulpit. Not a whole lot, but there are some. Well... Just wanted to share that with you. Thank you for listening. Now, I would think that the leaders of the LGBT community, as well as those who are in favor of transgender bathrooms and everything else, they would want their leaders to come out of the closet, wouldn't they? Interesting. Maybe that's what Joan Rivers was getting at and why she was killed, and maybe the reason that the people in the gay community won't push this story forward it's because they feel they'd be killed too so really what's going on really what it is is perversion at the highest levels of both the vatican which we've shown with the popes and all of the pedophilia there as well as in the high levels of our government and all the pedophile rings that are going on as we speak so many children have been missing over eight hundred thousand missing children and those are according to some statistics that are uh, out there right now. Unreal. And uh, I just wanted to present this to uh, alert you of that. We'll be back Monday on the Investigative Journal. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book the rapture will be canceled. Visit crossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crossTheBorder.org, 
To get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crossthborder.org.